Hello there, ladies and gentlemen of the people of YouTube watching this. Oh, that's a great way to start a video. Oh, I should start again. Nah. Yeah, I'll keep going. Now, for, for those of you who haven't yet recognized what this game is, this is Rainbow Six for PlayStation. And yes, that is old. And I don't do very well. That's mainly because the axis which lets you look up and down is inverted and I can't change it like going back into the controls so when I want to look up at the ceiling it looks down at the floor and vice versa and it's very annoying and how did that hurt my teammates I had three attempts at this before I got anywhere this was as far as I got and there was a reason why I stopped playing it when I first got the game and it you know <laughs> I, won't be, I, I haven't <laughs> as soon as I died after this I took it straight back out the PlayStation I didn't do too well I mean Look at that. It, it's just the fact that you've got two other teammates who aren't controlled, like they will just stand there. That's all they do. And then when you die, you take one of their uh, places. Oh, that guy on the left is moving. He's running into the wall. That's nice. Oh, that's really nice of him. You know, he thought, my friend's being shot. I'll run into this wall. That's nice. So, yeah, I don't do very well. Like, they don't follow me. This is me crouched. Doo -doo. Yeah, I've split, this, I've split the gameplay up into two sections. This one is Rainbow Six. And the next one is Time Crisis. Yes, that old um, arcade game, that's the word I'm looking for. Keep totting. Damn it. Ah, well. I've already screwed this up once, I'll keep going. Yeah, Time Crisis. And I don't have the gun that looks at the screen, you know, to do the shooting. I am actually using the old controller, which means I have to use the directional buttons. And I have to press square to come out of cover, and then keep holding square and press X to shoot, which isn't the easiest thing to, to do. But, you know, I get it done. Ah, now there was a point to this commentary, and it was to do with sort of the actual content of commentaries. Because I mean, gameplays can—it's it's nice to see a different change. Like I think sort of everything to do with gameplay commentaries now is so saturated with Call of Duty sort of games, and it's not—you know—it's not difficult to tell why. It's not a bad game to have as that background, but you know, it's it's, en it's enjoyable to watch. But there's so there's so much of it that it does get quite dull and boring and I think of recent it's got to a point where people aren't too bothered with it anymore but I know I've logged onto YouTube my subscriptions has come up and it's just Call of Duty this top five plays Call of Duty that look what I've done with this pointy knife thing and I tend to find myself nowadays is like I'll, um, you know some of my favorite commentators I might click on them but you know maybe I'll skip forward a bit which is unusual because not so long ago I'd be watching the whole 10 minutes and thinking, wow, this is really good. But it's got to this point now where I just I find myself skipping sections and that's not necessarily a good sign. Although it's not bad, you know, maybe it's just I've got to a point where I've watched so much that I need to take a break from watching commentaries. Who knows? And But I, I do think that might have something to do with just the fact that it is sort of a Call of Duty uh, background. I, I can't be bothered watching them anymore. You know, it's got to that point where you've seen one, you've seen them all. So I am mixing up a bit. I found my old PlayStation 2, so I've got this out. And look at those graphics, aren't they sexy? Look at that piano. <laughs> Looks like a chocolate bar with white keys. Look here. Look at that door. Have you seen the door? Oh, there's dust coming out of that door. <laughs> Changing magazine takes a few seconds. This game is supposedly so realistic. And I guess the sort of the backdrop to it is. But control wise and that it's not that, you know, enjoyable. I guess that's the whole thing with Call of Duty. People think it's a realistic shooter, and therefore it has to be really realistic. But it's really difficult to enjoy a game like that if something was so real, like one bullet will kill you. So, you know, even on hardcore mode, it takes a couple of bullets. So <laughs> people would get seriously annoyed if they turned the corner and one bullet hit the kneecap, and all of a sudden they couldn't move. Well, maybe they should do that. I, th I think I'd play that for a while. If, you know, you got shot in the leg, you actually had to hop, and your character screen was jumping up and down. I, th I think I'd give that a go. Anyway, here's Time Crisis, and the graphics aren't much better. But there's... Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> struggling to shoot everyone. See that little blue dot? That's where my aim is. And so I'm having to use the directional buttons to move it. Now, where I was, I was with commentaries. Yeah, and I think that leads on to the sort of... What do people want to hear nowadays in commentaries? So I think, even if you do change it up a bit, like, I could play Time Crisis, but I don't see many other people having this game. And I don't think they're going to think, I wonder if I can have some tips and tricks in that game. I mean, if you do, then, you know, tell me. <laughs> that, that would be that would be interesting to see. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. 
And I guess the other thing is sort of like people might want to hear stories, but I guess it's funny ones, entertaining ones. That's what people want. They want to be entertained. But there's a certain point of well, you know what sort of content do you want? Because like I don't have a giant sort of fan base. I've got six, six subscribers, which you know I guess is normal. I haven't been doing this for too long. A couple of which are my friends. Uh, a couple of which are sort of I would say they were friends as far as sort of you know like online. Uh, relationships go with STFU Gabe and Dugan's giant beard and then a couple of people who I don't know and you know I think it would be weird if I just started randomly yelping out sort of stories of my life you know I'm not exactly about to dictate my autobiography on a gameplay video and I think that would be weird I think to listen to and view I mean I guess sort of funny stories would be nice but it's difficult to judge what people want and then therefore what to put on a video. So I guess that's, you have to wait for the viewers to tell you. And I guess if you're watching this, I'll post this on the app. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to tell people what you'd like to hear or like what amuses you. Because then I think that gives people a good sort of judgment of what to put on there. Especially for new uh, sort of directors, I guess. I use directors loosely, like I'm not holding a camera and, you know, producing a giant film, but people who are making these gameplay commentaries. So, like, somebody could pick up a game tomorrow and all of a sudden it's quite difficult, like, ooh, what should I talk about? It's quite awkward to pick up a microphone or talk into your laptop whilst this video is going on in the background. And I guess that's where, you know, the first problems will come. Some people find it really natural, others won't. I think was, I was a bit awkward with it, but you know, I'm getting on. I enjoy doing it, this is why I'm doing it. And I guess that's why some people struggle to make it sort of big, as you might call it. Because they don't know what to talk about, they haven't got the subscription base telling them, you know, the subscriber base, telling them what's good, what's not. And that's where the difficulty lies. Oh, like this, like thousands of people jumping out behind walls. I do remember about this game, there'll be somebody hiding in a box somewhere, so when you turn the corner it goes peekaboo and starts shooting at you. That's nice. Look, look how bland these walls are. Living in a castle though, I guess, so that'll make it explain it. Wait, wait. Like two health bars. It's amazing to play a game where you've actually got a health pack. <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, games nowadays don't do that. You just regenerate it. Imagine if soldiers could do that. You just hide behind a rock and all of a sudden the ketchup on your screen disappears and you'd be alright. You go, wow. Area 2 is clear, moving on, and that I guess that's the thing now, I sort of, I made the point, I guess, with my commentaries, you know, what the people want to hear, and it's difficult for people, if you are new to commentating, and you're talking about, well, how can I make it better, I guess the only thing to say is, you know, make it entertaining, I, I don't know how many people will enjoy this, I guess it's more informative than sort of, you know, laugh a minute, but... I guess that's the video it's turned out to be. And well it's what I wanted it to be as well. It's more asking people, asking viewers what they want. And hopefully I'll get some feedback. You never know. Look at these guys with orange vests on. And this helicopter as well. Like, hurry up! <laughs> I've got a pistol, how does it expect me to take down this helicopter? <laughs> hurry up, do it quicker. Shoot it, shoot it. And I do, I take it down. I wonder what pistol we got. Surely we should be given the military what this is. Action. Fifteen seconds. Why do you have... Oh, there must be... Is there a bomb or something on the castle? Why is there a time limit? I mean, <laughs> I don't think they send... Like, when <laughs> they get one detective, like, yeah, go to this castle, take everybody out. There's thousands of them, one of you. You've got 30 seconds to do it. <laughs> but don't worry, every time you kill 10, we'll give you another... Oh, look at me, I'm dead. Oh, well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you...